I have used this a bunch oh, of times. Oh, jeez, we're live. Oh, okay. All right, right. Yes. Hi. Yeah, I probably should have been watching the screen. Well, anyways, good evening and uh, welcome to the show. Bond 25 has been delayed from its April opening, possibly uh, to possibly November. Various reasons slash excuses. I'm really screwing up this monologue. <laughs> has been rumored, such as poor testing with audiences, the coronavirus, and Sean Connery still trying to find a way to make money off of it. He just won't go away at times, it feels like. The Invisible Man being one of the highest grossing films uh, based upon its budget since, well, the Blair Witch Project and that first cat playing that video, piano video on YouTube. The production company has now taken the reins of a new kind of old project, Dracula. I guess the dark universe is now happening without Tom Cruise. Some people are happy and some people like the mummy. I'm just saying, I did. Now, moving on, what we have, what, what, hey, what are you doing? You know we have to disinfect everything. We have disinfected everything right before the show. We, did, we you don't need to disinfect everything. Terry, right the virus. I know about the virus. I know. Okay. Stop it. We are live on the air. How can we do this on the air? Just start the damn show. <laughs> Good evening, welcome to the Early Late Night Live Show on every Wednesday night from 7 to 8 on Exeter Channel 98 and on our YouTube channel, the Early Late Night Live Show YouTube channel. Please make sure to like, <laughs> excuse me, I just inhaled some alcohol uh, from, the, from, the, from the wipe, the alcohol wipe, not from, <laughs> I just realized how that sounded. That's not All how right. they do it. You they, I, I know, that's not how, yeah, how you do it, so, yes. Yeah. Um, anyways, I'm fine, I haven't been drinking with the show, but anyways, it's the Early Late Night Live Show on every Wednesday night from 7 to 8. Exeter Channel 98 and on our YouTube channel, the Early Late Night Live Show YouTube channel. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends and enemies alike. Um, yes, so we're here. I still haven't brushed my, I still haven't had my hair cut. I apologize for that. But sitting with me always, unfortunately, is my sister KJ. Hey, everyone. She's here. I haven't gotten my hair cut either, just so you know. Yeah, but it works well for you. Me, me it just looks like a mess. <laughs> and Mitch Fortier, what are you doing, Mitch Fortier? Oh, I have nothing. Mitch Fortier, who was not prepped before the show, Apparently, because he had to do his hair now. Unlike me, who just doesn't get prepped at all at least for the show. <laughs> at least it didn't. <laughs> that, that is true. Um, I just noticed right before I got on the show, um, the, I guess when I was putting my jacket on, said I've got my work tool right here. I've got a little tool that I keep on the show. Now, the one thing I thought was pretty funny was that he mentioned that, uh, but he didn't mention um, the this, nine millimeter. Thing. No, not the nine millimeter. <laughs> I have not been drinking. There's no weaponry in here. He didn't mention the red first aid thing that I also, <laughs> which is a little bit more apparent. So I'm not going to stand up for the rest of the show. Just so I, I actually look like from here on down, I, I kind of thought about what I was doing. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I don't think anyone would make that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> not after that. <laughs> I don't think not after that monologue. <laughs> I really didn't know that that was. <laughs> I totally forgot the monologue was happening at the moment. All of a sudden, we were talking about a movie and we got excited. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, Arnie was like, "You're on the air! You're on the air!" I'm like, "Oh God! Hi!" You know, it hasn't happened since the old studio. Yeah, Where yeah. I was yelling oh, at someone. Oh, that's shut up. Okay. That's okay. I was out back and I heard the, the theme music. Oh, yeah. And Ryan's like, oh, we're on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Run away. Pierre's just sitting there going like, why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> so he's sitting with us for Trailer Trash. Pierre Rump, how you hey. doing, Pierre? How are you, Terry? It's been a while. I think day, last day. time yeah. you were here, you were at the other studio. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. So. You got to see this studio now when it actually evolved. You weren't on the crappy old couch we used to have here and yeah. no backdrop. And you know. He is in the crappy old chair, though. He isn't. It's not a nice chair. Everyone wanted to get rid of that Retro. chair. Retro. I liked it. I liked that chair. Everyone wanted me to get rid of it. But I was told I had to sit in this one because I'm short. And this now puts me at the proper height. So, yeah. Yeah. Stop nodding, everyone. OK. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we're putting it at the beginning of the show because no one has won the argument yet with me. Uh, to move it back to where it was. But I have had a bunch of guests, such as Pierre, say, wasn't this, wasn't Trailer Trash at the end of the show? So maybe, we may be moving in. Anyways, Trailer Trash, our favorite segment of the show. That's why I, I put it early so we can get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> that joke is going to be out of season pretty soon. Trailer Trash is the redheaded stepchild. Yes. <laughs> All right, Arnie, what's the first one we have up? Uh, it's Tenet. 
All right. Or I, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. It seemed like there was an extra N when they said it in the trailer. Uh, yeah, right? yeah. But, um, but it's Tenet, according to this. It's uh, coming out in uh, July, mm -hmm. and it's directed by Christopher Nolan, of course. It Written stars, by Christopher Nolan, of course. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It stars... Um, and produced. Yeah, John David Washington. Sorry, he's a little further down the yep. cast list because it also has Kenneth Branagh, uh, Robert Pattinson. IMDb and does Michael not do King. things in order of fame by any stretch, or even in the order of how you are going to come up in the credits. Right. It's it's kind of a, how odd. I don't know how IMDb does. It. I think it's just whoever got listed first usually goes up. So um, this is listed as being an action epic revolving around international espionage, time travel, and evolution possibly about a man trying to prevent World War III through time travel and rebirth. It literally says possibly? It literally says possibly. Well, I do know that Christopher Nolan has been wanting to make a Bond film, and I don't think he would be a good choice for writing a Bond movie. No, I don't think so. Bonds <laughs> kind of need to be linear. I hate to say this, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. Nolan's not linear. No, Nolan's not linear. He's also and not package like you no. know there's a certain james bond package you know right beats that have to be hit and, yeah, um, yeah but i will say this this looks like a james bond film and it definitely has like a spy espionage action adventure feel yeah. to it um but yeah. let's go over to our guest first pierre rumpf what is your thoughts on this trailer i liked it a lot actually um i like nolan too uh and when you talk about linear or the lack thereof he's he's got an obsession with memory and uh, timing. Yeah. And um, the first time he really did that, I think, was Memento in 2000, um, and then Inception. But and what many people are saying is greatest work, Dunkirk, uh, 2017. He does it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the back and forth, or you don't know it's back and forth at the beginning. Right. But it's um, you 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 realize it toward the end. Um, I, I really like it. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna give it two thumbs up. Oh, you already jumped in. Whoa, whoa. Wow, well, yeah, you have your rating afterwards. <laughs> Mitch Fortier, uh, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the trailer looks pretty awesome, and I love the idea of this whole time traveling aspect of things. Uh, it uh, really caught my attention in terms of some of the cinematography. I didn't realize it was Robert Pattinson until I actually read the cast list. Mm -hmm. So he's not clearly not all that well featured, but Washington, uh, it'd be cool to see him in this. Doesn't look like a super challenging role, I'll be honest, but it'll be uh, interesting to see how he performs. Um, although that scene looks kind of cool. And uh, I don't feel like any role from, a, from a, a Nolan film is super challenging, though, besides for the Joker. I mean, everyone does a good job in his films, but it, there's a lot of very kind of monotone kind of driven lines in the way people are, are doing it. Very, a lot of his films, the actors are very reserved in the way they do their performance. It's almost like kind of old school style of movie acting, like, yeah. you know, very... Con it's really more plot driven or even the way it's shot. Right. It's yeah. like the way it's told. Is that was one of the things I liked about yeah. this trailer, actually, was that they kind of give you this real clear sense of what is at stake. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're talking about, you know, the world pre preventing World War Three, having this strange time manipulation technology. I don't understand him working out on the ship. That's clearly I mean, a throwback to the Bourne identity. Okay. If you ever remember the Bourne Identity, him working out on the ship that he was found after the very beginning, I'm just saying. Oh, right. It feels like, a sp it feels like this is like, okay, I'm going Which to make Nolan wasn't Bond involved film. with, was he? No, but I feel like he's, gonna make, he's trying to make his James Bond film out of this. That's what I feel like. So I really liked Interstellar. Uh, I think that's a great yeah, film really. and uh, really a lot of personal and, uh, and neat moments and just visually amazing. Uh, so this could, it's got a lot of promise. All right, Arnie? Okay, so I didn't get any sense of the stakes. Mm -hmm. I know they keep saying it's World War III, but I didn't see any indication that anything's wrong except the car flipping back over, right. which is cool. It could be a magnet. I don't know, right? But um, I, it looks like I don't care. Like, it, I don't, I don't, because it's a whole bunch of British people saying, you're needed. And it's like, <laughs> but I don't know why he's needed, and I don't get any indication that any of them are playing him honest. So this mm -hmm. could just be one elaborate scheme that this guy's caught in. Right. I don't really see how the world's going to be affected by any of the stuff they show. It's definitely a Nolan trail in the sense they give you, he's given very little mm -hmm. and a lot of like, well, what's going it's on. It's not there. intriguing. It's no, like, oh. no, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> right, there's shots on there and people are moving backwards. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you've been a huge Nolan fan anyways. I love Dunkirk. I yeah. like the Batman series. Right. But I love Dunkirk. That was, it caught me by the throat and kept me there. 
I, I haven't walked out of a movie shaking so much since that movie with the bear attack that <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio was Yes. In, movie we always remember. forget the name of that movie. Yeah, Revenant. Revenant, yes. It's like it should be Revenant. called Bear Attack. It yes. Be yes. Called. <laughs> Just remember Revenant, Bear yeah. Attack. Uh, I am, uh, I'm going to say really quick that I, I sort of echo um, a lot of what Pierre and, and, and Mitch said. And I kind of I get, definitely get what you say, Arnie, that there's, there's not a ton of intrigue into this. But I will say this. Uh, John David Washington, that, that is that yeah. his name? I, I want to hear, I want to see the story through him because he's intriguing because he clearly is the guy thrown into this and mm -hmm. he's trying to figure out what's going on but he also looks like the guy who is trying to do the right thing and they did it very simply in the trailer that it's like, okay, if you're not invested in him, you're probably not invested in the movie and that's the feeling I have. So I'm very interested in him. I like the kind of Bond-like look and feel and I'm always interested in a Christopher Nolan film. I haven't seen one of his that I've I've never disliked one of his films. Some are great, some are okay. I've never disliked one of his films. So I'm very interested in that. Um, so I'm gonna give a thumb up, a solid thumb up, and one just about going up because there wasn't too much in the trailer. Perfectly honest, good, bad, or indifferent. There wasn't too much in the tra uh, trailer. Some really good stuff. Nothing was fantastic in the trailer though. There was yeah. some good stuff in it, but nothing was fantastic. So, Arnie, your rating? Uh, I'm gonna give it a meh. Okay. Because except for the fact that Kenneth Branagh and Michael Caine are in it, there really is no reason why. I'd I think Kenneth Branagh is gonna play, be the Bond villain. Just saying. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Adam Newman that. says blasphemy for what? Probably me. <laughs> All right. Sorry, probably. Adam. All, right. Yeah, All right, Mitch. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I just t totally disagree with the fact that there isn't any stakes in here, but it the fact that. No, uh, you, you, yeah, that was clear. He, so. This guy is actually gonna. It looks like he's being pulled out of what was potentially a suicide situation. Like he was giving up whatever. They said something very specific about that, and then he's all of a sudden in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's gonna be interesting to see how they do develop that character. But uh, I'm a th uh, one thumb up for the overall concept and for what it looks like is gonna be. Uh, a kind of intriguing uh, scenario and technology, and then I'm um, kind of sideways because there wasn't anything right, that yeah. blew me away about no, the trailer right. overall. So, all right, Pierre, I'm going to give him two thumbs up. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, I, I, I'm just a big Nolan fan. Um, Dunkirk, uh, even Memento, I remember that from way back, and I was blown away. I like his anti-linear approach. So um, right. I'm going to give him two thumbs up. All right. All right. Let's move on to the next trailer. All right. So this is, <clears throat> seems to be a more traditional outing. It, it's Greyhound starring Tom Hanks. All right. Um, OK. So, um, so this is a, a Greyhound, which is coming out um, June. And it stars Tom Hanks, Elizabeth Shue. It's directed by Aaron Schneider. And it's based on um, a C.S. Forrester novel. And he wrote, um, he wrote uh, the Horatio Hornblower mm -hmm. books. And uh, Tom Hanks did the screenplay. And the write-up is, early in World War II, an inexperienced US Navy captain must lead an allied convoy being stalked by Nazi U-boat wolf packs. I've got, I've, I've definitely got something I want to say about this. Mm -hmm. As do I. Yeah, so uh, Mitch, we'll start with you then. Uh, so uh, Tom Hanks, love him, right? I'll watch anything that he does, period. Mm -hmm. But um, war movies, generally speaking, I have a, uh, an affinity for them. We've had some really great ones over the last year or so. Uh, this one, to me, in terms of, like, we're talking about stakes before, right? It just seems like well, a disagree. bunch of ships going out <laughs> on, on the ocean <laughs> and, uh, and a bunch of U-boats that are attacking them. I mean, I don't see why I should be invested in or invested in all of these people in any way, shape, or form uh, from this trailer. And uh, it just look, literally looks like a bunch of ships that are just going to shoot at each other and nothing more than that. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> they're gonna disagree. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> uh, I, I too am a Tom Hanks fan. I mean, Saving Private Ryan was one of my favorites, mm -hmm. um, and so when I saw this, I'm like, oh, this is the waterborne version of Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> but you know, on the ocean, which I think adds an element to it, uh, I love how the trailer starts off with his prayer. Right. Um, he, he's a, uh, a really devout Christian, and um, that feeling I got just like. When you see in the trailer, it says the only thing more dangerous than the front lines was the fight to get there. And uh, being prior military myself and loving war movies like you do, Mitch, uh, I love it. And so I'm looking forward to it. All right, Arnie? OK, so um, I saw the stakes from beat one. Because <laughs> when he said uh, you know, this was his first time in the middle of the ocean and he's crossing the U-boat lines to get to England yeah. during World War II, I'm like, holy crap, that wasn't a good plan, putting the inexperienced <laughs> yeah. guy in yeah. charge of a convoy. Um, I, I love being on the water. I love being uh, at sea. And I love the feeling you get when you're rocking on a ship. 
So I really got that in this trailer. And I also got the, there's nothing out there to back you up if you're being attacked. You're it. And that's what I got from this trailer. And um, I must confess, when I first saw that Tom Hanks was leading this, I thought, he's kind of old to be leading a war movie, isn't he? Right. I, but I watched this and I'm like, oh, I have to see this. I got to see if he's going to make it. <laughs> but, yeah, and for his first time being that old. Right. It's kind of an interesting Yeah, scenario. and I'm like, holy cow, this isn't, yeah. So I got definitely got the, yeah, this could go bad. I will say this. this. This is what I want to I say. I love it when actors play these very dramatic roles um, mm -hmm. in films that are pretty critically acclaimed. And then clearly the next one, they're like, we got bored. <laughs> we want to see something blow up. So Mr. Rogers, he ain't in this. <laughs> All right. Um, I grew up watching a lot of uh, old old war movies, and they, I mean, when I see, went to see 1917, I said there was that sickening feeling of danger yeah. that I hadn't felt watching a movie in a long time. Because I'm in movies, and I watch movies, and I make movies, so I, I, a lot of times I've, it's hard for me to get lost, but 1917 gave me that feeling that I was lost. I was with, I went on the journey with these guys. This trailer made me frightened to step on a boat. Yeah. Yeah. That was the feel, like just the shot of the ship looking like the ship was going to just tip over because of the water. I mean, I don't think we, re we always realize how much these ships, like skyscrapers sway, like 20 feet sometimes. You know, ships take a beating on the, on the ocean. And this felt like, and the way they did the sound effect with the U-boats, yeah of like really the impression of what it feels like to have a, like a monster underneath your depths that you really can't see and you really can't target. And let's be honest, they're a battleship. You really can't fight back as easily as they can, as they can fight you. I mean, I was just blown away of how, like this is gonna be a movie that you're gripping from one end to the other. Um, and I'm not a huge Tom Hanks fan. I think he's good, but I'm not a huge Tom Hanks fan. And I think he's a good cast for this because he seems like a guy who's out of his depth. <laughs> and you know, he does, no pun intended. But he seems like a guy who's out of like he's like a guy who's out of his depth. This and movie's his, not. This does not hold in water with me. You know, <laughs> right. right yeah. Well, the, the line in the end, we said something like, "Will rain hell on them," or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a line that Tom Hanks would say. But it, it does seem like what a panicky guy would say. Like uh, he's trying to soup himself up to like, uh, we've we've got to get uh, get through this. And you know, it was all. I gotta say, war. I respect the German idea in this mm -hmm. because if I was the country that was being attacked, I'd be like, you know what, take out the ships before they get here. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm on that. <laughs> and you're a history buff. Yeah. And I said, well, I didn't know much about U-boats, but according to you, they were very successful. Yeah, they were, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, okay. They were basically, uh, the plan was to starve out England. Wow. And they were kind of getting there. When it's said <laughs> in the line that seven of the ships are, are already taken out, yeah. right. like that far into the trail, like, oh my God, this is, they're not pulling any punches in this. Yeah. Anyways. Two solid thumbs up for me for this. I, I absolutely want to see this in theaters. I really, really want to see this. Arnie? Yeah, uh, definitely two thumbs up. All right, yeah. Mitch? Yeah, despite the, uh, my uh, initial feeling in regards to the trailer was kind of uh, kind of thin for all mm -hmm. intents and purposes and didn't give me a lot of excitement, it looks amazing. Like you said, it really kind of pulls you in right. what it was like to be in there. I think that's going to be kind of cool, Tom Hanks. Um, and the subject matter in general and how it looks, I think, is going to... Uh, I'm going to go see it in the theater. All right. And Pierre? Two thumbs up. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so uh, moving, uh, moving on from Dave. Dave, um, Dave, what are you doing, Dave? Cleaning the back of the couch. Why are you cleaning the back? Do I need a mask? No, no, you don't need a mask, <laughs> Pierre. No, no, you're, you're fine. Dave, <clears> not. Do I need a mask? Is it, no, Mitch, you don't need a mask. Gosh, we're life on the air right now. Right now, Dave, go to the back room. Go to the back room. <sighs> Wait for him. Don't blame me. When I get sick, you're the first person I'm coughing on. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, anyways, up next, one of my favorite actors, Pierre Rumpf, talks about his new film, Don't Say My Name. That's bad for advertising. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Oh, hey. Um, we're, uh, we're starting a new show. I'm hosting. So are we. I even wore my suit. Yeah, we, uh, we thought it... At this point, it would be probably a little bit better to aim at a younger audience, so we hired Kate. And then. Wait, them? Our names are them? Shut up. Except we won't talk sports, we're not gonna talk politics, just entertainment. That saves my show. Well, we're not that original. Get out. Stay. Terry, this is my show. Wanna keep your job? You're fired. Oh, what? what? I'm here! Show's canceled. Damn. 
Welcome back to the Er La Nihit How Eerie Show. <laughs> this is what happens when someone sits down in the chair and knocks over the sign. That's my fault. Oddly enough, yeah. it's, it's what happens when I try to order something in Mandarin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, we welcome back actor, producer, policeman, lawyer, military man, real estate agent. The list could go on, but we all know him as Captain Schilling from uh, Dinner Party, which is premiering on May 23rd. Tickets are now, av uh, now available. <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, tickets are now available. For more information, we'll drop the link down below. But he's here to talk about his film, Don't Say My Name. Pierre, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Terry. Yeah. Welcome to be back. Yeah, it, last time you, you were at a different, a different studio, so you haven't been to this studio. Yeah, no, this is the first time I've been here. Right, yeah. yeah. And it's working this week. We've been yeah. having some technical issues, but I guess the technology is afraid of you because it's snapping too. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you've been up to. So um, we shot Don't Say My Name in November, um, multiple locations in um, Florida, and um, great production uh, working with uh, Federico Segarra of Sealin Films. Mm -hmm. He directed it. His wife, uh, Patricia, uh, wrote it and uh, Marty Jean-Louis of uh, 24 Flicks produced it. Wow. Yeah. Very, it looks amazing. Yeah. It looks uh, intense. Yeah, very intense. The subject matter is uh, uh, delicate, to mm -hmm. say the least, um, and I think people are going to be taken aback at the opening scene and uh, starkly reminded of how sensitive this uh, content matter is. Right. Yeah. Now, what part do you play in this one? I play uh, Judge Trevis, mm -hmm. a uh, corrupt, evil judge who uh, helps the traffickers. Weren't you a corrupt Type person? Typecast? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, much. <laughs> so, who did you play in the Blood Throne? Uh, King Herod. Right. Um, corrupt, which, evil. by the way, uh, as you know, Mitch was my physician. And uh, i got to say, Mitch, you're doing quite a magic uh, job here uh, appearing. I thought my general had you cut into bits and <laughs> fed to the yeah. bigger. Well, it's the uh, magic of television. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You escaped it nicely. Yeah, I'll drawn be. and quartered, and I can still show up on. I'll have to talk to Cerberus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, guys, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but so it was down in Florida. Now you yes. live in uh, you live in Massachusetts. Mass. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. So how did you end up with this gig? Well, um, actually, Laura May Poor of uh, Christian Casting, mm -hmm. who cast me in and Mitch in um, A Blood Throne, right. um, was, uh, did the casting for Don't Say My Name. And uh, both uh, Federico and uh, Marty uh, asked Laura May, who are we going to get for the judge? And she said, I've got just the guy. And um, they said, oh, good, is he in Florida? And she said, no, he's in Mass. Will he come? Yes. And once she called me and described it to me, I knew what she was talking about. Because when I was at ICFF, International Christian Film Festival, last year, mm -hmm. um, I saw the poster for it. And I thought it was um, competing at ICFF last year. Right. Uh, but come to find out, it wasn't. It was just the pre-production poster. Mm -hmm. And once I realized what the content was, I was I wanted to be in it. I was literally praying about it. Mm. And sure enough, I, I uh, was asked by Laura May if I would be interested in it. And I, as soon as she started to describe it, I said, are you talking about Don't Say My Name? She said, yes. I said, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Now, as a lawyer and a police officer, I mean, I'm sure you've had some dealings in the subject of <coughs> trafficking. I don't want to go into great detail, but did you feel like this was an accurate portrayal of some of the things that had been going oh, on? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and we also had uh, Homeland Security agents on set, wow. uh, two or three of them constantly on set. They uh, consulted, uh, we consulted them, and they were on set as advisors for us. Uh, they were instrumental and uh, a wealth of resources, uh, both uh, on set and off set. And that's, that's a great. feature film, right? Oh, yeah, feature film. Right. Feature. Yeah. Um, and when's it coming out? We're going to have the uh, international premiere at the International Christian Film Festival in May, uh, May 15th. Mm -hmm. uh, it cannot compete because uh, Marty Jean-Louis is the producer. Right. And uh, Marty is uh, the founder and director of the International Christian Film Festival. So obviously it can't compete, but it is going to be showcased at the, uh, at the film festival. And where does that take place? That's in Orlando. Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so, okay, now... Really excited to hear about this film, but 
two weeks in a row we've had people that were uh, lawyers and military and you know uh, multiple whole list of things oh, really? whole, whole, whole list of things doing. yes yeah uh, you are not a heart surgeon too are you uh, no <laughs> okay no. all right yes um, so but I want us to tell a little bit about you because we haven't had much of a chance me and you have talked quite a bit yes. um, over the time span and for those who don't know uh, you and Arnie met, I think, in an acting class. Yes, yes. Right, exactly. Yes. Right. Remember that? And we, yes. we were, yes. we were Steve, Black, and a, Steve Blackwood yes, acting class. Yes, you've got in the cowboy uh, scene. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think I've told you this story. I think I've told you this story before. So I hope it's not shocking when you yeah. hear. Arnie said, uh, "We have the guy for Captain Schilling. He really wants to play the part." He, and I said, "Okay." I had kind of an image in mind. And she sent me a photo. I said, "Oh, he looks like the part." You said, "I think you sent me three auditions." Yes. Yes. Correct. And I, I said, "I said, nah." with every audition and then you came on set and you blew me away <laughs> I was like his audience was like I really want this guy and I'm like okay fine fine we'll have this guy he looks the part he looks the part yeah he's pretty okay it's fine it's, I've only won so many arguments <laughs> you know and I'm glad I lost this one because I really did win in the long run because you walked on set and it was just amazing Thank you. it was just it was just it was such a fun fun experience and you're playing the most serious guy, and you ruined the most amount of takes by just coming into the camera doing something funny, and you <laughs> ate most of the props. <laughs> Every time I turned around on the dinner scene, we had so only so much food. You kept eating it, and I had to keep telling you, we've only got so much to stop eating. You were like a 12-year-old child. I'm like, what is going on with this guy? I mean, stop eating the props. <laughs> you know? oh, and you're just casually just there, just chomping away. I'm like, it's not actually dinner. <laughs> we yeah. know that. So, um, but yeah. So, how did you go from being a lawyer? I mean, you got lawyer, real estate agent, cop, and yeah. acting. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in short story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you... Well, the acting came around in 2016 when they were looking for real police to be uh, extras in the movie uh, Patriots Day with Mark Wahlberg mm -hmm. and Kevin Bacon. So, um, Boston Casting hired me for that. I played three different roles there on, and uh, I loved it. And I realized, geez, I don't want to be in the background. Right. So I pursued headshots, uh, classes at Boston Casting and CP Casting, um, resume, and uh, started getting invited for uh, um, auditions. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I got it. What, what's, now you've been, a, you produce films. Too. Well, I, I was the executive producer on A Blood Throne, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the acting, the whole filmmaking world, what thing do you think you want to see, if you could do just one thing, in it, what would you say? What would it, what would it be? Like what me, role just, or right, what? Yeah. What what part? What you know? Oh, would, um, would you ever be interested in producing or directing, or is it really just you really like the acting? I, I love the acting. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I could envision maybe directing the f something in the future, mm -hmm. but I just want to do the acting. What? And so, if you could, if there was one role, if there was one role that you could play, if oh, any gosh. role ever, if you know. James Bond. I, I don't care. Jane Austen. It doesn't matter. If there's one <laughs> role. <laughs> um, I like I like antagonists mm -hmm. um, in any type of role, uh, Bond or right. uh, yeah. Uh, I'd love to do a, a, an antagonist. Uh, yeah, Mitch, you're right. Typecast apparently so far, <laughs> um, and looking forward to doing a milk toast dad role. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why I, I love Dinner Party. Uh, because although Captain Schilling was sort of stern, we were able to inject an element of uh, humor into right. Schilling. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do like antagonists. You know, in the role of Captain Schilling, I mean, the whole dinner party is filled with a bunch of characters. Yeah. And um, me and Arnie pushed the actors a real lot because we had a very short amount of time, shooting time, about four days to shoot the film. And a lot of dialogue. And everyone just really brought so much to the role. Yeah. Um, we didn't have to coach anyone. <clears throat> we didn't have to coach anyone on the day. And the one thing I, I thought was amazing, and you especially, you especially, a lot of these, this was a comedy. This was a dinner, dinner party, dinner play type of comedy. So you could play this role about as corny as you wanted to, and me and Arnie were going to be like, that was perfect. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, that was great. <laughs> because it's that type of movie, it's, right. and that was, that's what it was. But I was so impressed with how much realism, because you played a very on paper to a degree a very like one two punch type of character and you brought so much realism to him and depth yeah you know not to not to 
forego Arnie's he's writing on that, but it, I mean, no, no, not, that, by, that not was, by any stretch. That's what helped. Right, but it, I mean, the little inflections and stuff like that. So what, how would you say, what is the one bit of advice you would give to actor for taking, because Herod obviously is a kind of outlandish character and stuff like that yeah. uh, too. What's the one bit of element you would say to find that thing that makes you stand in the character's shoes? Well, you know, complete immersion in the script and reading it over and over and over and over and over and over again. You are a new actor, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, just so you can get a, a, a better feel as to different ways you can do it until finally you hone your own style as mm -hmm. to what you envision for that character. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, the Fair Fight, which we're hopefully gonna have an ad for when we, when we do uh, the dinner party premiere, we should have an ad ready for. Um, you were there and you were part of the fight scene, but you've only threw one strike yeah. And it was a take that we had to do very quickly because you were running out of time that day. And it right. came out so epic, and you're all going to love it when you see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, matter of fact, our director today, Dave Mills, um, is the guy who got hit, and he took it like a champ. <laughs> 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 and it came out very well. Anyways, uh, yeah. Pierre, Pierre Rump, so great having you on the show. Yeah. I'm sorry, we're, uh, we're out of time, but hopefully you want to stick around for the, I hope you want to stick around for the rest of the show. Oh, we yeah. have plenty more fun Absolutely. things to do. Um, uh, Pierre Rumpf, uh, check out Don't Say My Name. We'll have more links for that when it, uh, when we're, when it arrives. We have the trailer. Check it out after the show. Check it out. <laughs> and uh, yes, we'll be right back with the news with Mitch if he sticks around. All right. All set. Where's Arnie? It's only 9 o'clock. Oh, she'll be here. Oh, I'm here, guys. I'm here. Oh, you look great. Thanks. Wow. Arnie? Yeah. We're supposed to be filming promos for the early late night live show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and did you get the text message about the dress code? Oh, right, yeah, you said dress appropriately. And? Uh, well, I thought you said that on this show, you represented independent, angry filmmakers. Mitch represented actors in the industry, and I represented geeks and fangirls. Yeah? And you said dress appropriately. Oh, God. Yeah. So? <sighs> Appropriate. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Watch the early late night live show. Every Wednesday night at 7 on Exeter 98. And live on YouTube. Live long and prosper, y'all. Arnie? Yeah. Get out. Right. I like it. Jimmy's live on the air, right live on the air. Welcome back to the early late night live show on every Wednesday night from 7 to 8, typically without something being smashed in my face. All right, anyways, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, Mitch's seg segment of the show. We decided to give him a quarter of the show because he's here. We figured he's, he deserves something and he shows up all right, pretty consistently. I haven't been able to get rid of him anytime soon. <laughs> um, and he's got the news. So Mitch Forty, what you got? It's good to know things that people don't want other people to know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, though, you do actually do the research on the news, and I don't. So that's kind of, sort of, yeah. yeah. So, well, actually, so that's the stuff that I know tonight. Yeah. But <laughs> it might be different tomorrow. Yeah. Um, uh, so a quick uh, box office update. Uh, Onward is um, opened up this past weekend in 4,300 theaters. Uh, mm -hmm. They took $39 million uh, domestically. Uh, they had a budget of about 100 to uh, 200 million. They're not sure. It's an, an animation. 200 million? So 100 to 200. They had a pretty big cast. So, so. And uh, a lot of animation's expensive still, you right. know, despite. So we'll see how they end up doing ultimately, but it is a Disney production. So we, they had seven $1 billion films last year. I can't imagine this one's going to be that much different. Right, yeah. Um, but uh, I get a feeling it's like going to be one of those kids' movies that <laughs> we're going to watch in 10 years ago. Oh, man, yeah, I remember this came out. I didn't watch it in theaters. It's not bad. You know, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> like flushed away. Yeah. It's not bad. It's, an, it's, you know? a, it's a new and unique story that I've never heard of before. I don't know where they got this story from. So it's kind of interesting mm -hmm. that it did so well, and you know, all of a sudden, uh, but it's that's right not out really of the gate. all that good though. It's not terrible. Million. It's not really good for two hundred million dollar Disney animated film, a kids movie. Thirty nine million is not that. Well, it's a lot better than uh, the way back with uh, um, with uh, uh, Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Yeah, but that's not name. a kids movie. No, I understand right, that. Yeah, it's yeah, a but film. As, oh, so, so you're saying as far as a kids movie, it's as far not as a kids all that movie, they're in a million. It's not really all that great. Yeah, you know. I'm, okay. Like, keep in mind, The Invisible Man, which is not a kids movie, made 56 million, I think, on its first weekend, and it had a budget of seven million or nine million or something, something like that. You know, that's not a kids movie. It's not sure. even. It's not even a big action film or anything like that. I think like you're missing the bigger picture here. What? 
They came up with an actually a unique story, as Mitch just said, and nobody wanted to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I find this concerning. <laughs> All the complaints from the Disney people, from the Disney haters, is like, come up with something unique. Not that unique. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really all that interested. Yeah, we'll, 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 we can talk more about Disney later. But, all right. Uh, so, way, anyways, uh, The Way Back opened up um, only in 2,700 theaters, and they uh, it took $8 million domestically. They got a budget of $30 million, so they're going to struggle a little bit. Mm, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, so comparatively, to budget wise, I think they did a little better. Eight million to a thirty million dollar budget. Forty million to to two hundred, right? right? So it's about twenty five percent ish, or so. And then yeah. uh, eight million to thirty. Yeah, thirty percent. Closer yeah. to thirty. Yeah. All right. Not too anyway, much. Not oh, that far off. Not that far off. But I think the way back is the one that could potentially grow if it's any good. Yeah, well, I guess we'll see. Well, we'll report it next week. How's that? We'll report it next week. Uh, really quick, totally forgot to mention. Um, we see the early late night live show is a proud sponsor of Annie's Angels Memorial Fund. Amy's Angels assists families in crisis due to disease, illness, or disability. Since 2007, they have raised more than $2.5 million, connecting neighbor to neighbor, friend to friend, business to business. You can help out too. Just visit amysangels.org. That's amysangels.org. All right. Move on. Sorry. Outstanding. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, uh, so the, uh, the Bachelor, it's 22 seasons The Bachelor's been on television. I can't believe it's been 22 seasons. That came out Me in neither. 1998. Wow. And I think I saw, I think I watched one uh, season, quote unquote, right? But essentially 22 Bachelors have gone through this process of having all these people and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I always, at first I thought it was kind of interesting. It was a social experiment kind of a thing. And I'm like, ah, maybe it won't work. Maybe it'll work. And then I thought it was kind of stupid. But anyway, it's 22 seasons, so I thought it was kind of blown away. But this last episode, uh, the, uh, the Bachelor had down, it was down to two people. And she leaves, one of them leaves, the one that he really wanted. Yeah, like she so didn't she come walked. back. Oh. She more or less walked away. And I'm not sure exactly why, what the story was. So he proposed to the other one. And then, like, hey, as a backup, yeah. <laughs> and then keys to success is showing up, right? <laughs> I don't know how long much later. Maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a month later, or whatever. Oh, after they introduced to the parents and all this other stuff, and the heck with this. Like, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, and backs out of that engagement. Uh, and but so that's then, happened before. Actually. Has it? Yeah, it happened before where um, he. I forget which bachelor it was, but you know they, you know they do the, they come back like two months later or something the like that. The check in on them. The check in on them. And so he proposed to girl A and let girl B go home. And when they checked in on them two months later, he let girl A go home and took girl B and they got married. And they're still married now. So like. All right, before we yeah. continue on. Terry's like, why do I care? Why are we talking about this on the, <laughs> on the show? That was really interesting, 22 seasons, yes. I remember when the first, I remember when they first started advertising Survivor when I was a kid. Survivor kid, Survivor came out. Sure. Uh, I think it was late 90s or mm -hmm. something like that. I apologize to those of you feeling old. I apologize for those of you <laughs> feeling young, you know? All right, but I remember when I was a kid, and I remember looking at that and going, wow, this show looks like crap. <laughs> and ever since, all reality shows, by and large, except for that one with the uh, little people, like, chasing uh, little people, like, controlling the dogs. The little... Right, right, the dog rescue one with, like, the little <laughs> people in it. That little, show was amazing. Shows, think, that show actually. was about little people who, who take care of dogs, you know? That show was amazing, because there's very few things quite as cool as seeing a guy rescue a dog that's about his size. That is really awesome, <laughs> all right? <laughs> so besides that show, all other reality shows oh, are I about disagree. terrible. <laughs> I generally don't like reality shows either. Survivor I find a little more interesting because there's the challenges and things that are kind of interestingly right. well, how they put them together and such, but, and then how, so I don't get into them. I don't watch them on a regular basis, but I will on a, uh, if it happens to be on. Um, but I disagree. I love the shows, the reality shows that are about like, oh, here's a, you know, here's a wreck of a house. Let's rebuild it. Oh, yeah. It's like a terrible restaurant. Yeah, Let's make yeah, it better. Yeah. Sure. I love those because basically they're makeover shows without yes. the yeah. shallowness of <laughs> yeah. actual makeover. Uh, like Ninja Warriors is another one. Yeah, that's kind of a reality show it's for a all game shows. But it's a game show. No, no, but, but, but they still oh. get into people's lives and how they're. But no, the difference in getting people's lives. But they're and, not like, interacting with each other. Right, right, yeah. It's not like. The Bachelor, uh, people getting married. What's or the, trying uh, to get, or th you know. Like Jersey Shore just makes me want to throw up in my mouth. <laughs> uh, I think it makes never a lot of people. What's episode. Never uh, seen no, one. I tried no. to watch The Bachelorette once. <laughs> and The Bachelorette, I just, I was like, I can't handle her voice. I can't, <laughs> I can't watch her show. Because her voice is driving me up a wall. So that lasted all about 10 minutes. 
Wow. Yeah. Well, apparently the one that he dumped is actually going on to The Bachelorette. Oh, all right. Yeah, so interesting little side note. The, the one that he dumped. Have we got the news beyond dumped. this right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, Disney's announced that uh, they cast uh, Peter Pan, the live action. Mm -hmm. So they were into this live action thing now. And Mulan kicking and Lion King did really well last year. And then, uh, so I don't know, Alexander Maloney and Ever Anderson. I don't know these two people, but there's a picture of them. They're kids. I mean, they look like they're 12, for God's yeah, sake. Yeah, photo? Uh, there was one in the folder. I don't know if uh, if Dan got it or not. See, that's us calling out Dan and embarrassing. No, no, that's, 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 <laughs> that would be completely my fault, Dan. I'll take the hit on that one because I didn't put it in there or let him know it was there. Um, but uh, Disney's trying to cash in on this live action stuff. They're going to redo Aladdin mm -hmm. or do a sequel to Aladdin. Yes. Uh, Which, Will okay. Smith is coming back. Will Smith is coming back. As far as I know, they're, they're expecting him to come back or be in it. So the story, they don't know a lot about it, obviously, but... Well, and they're That's also the doing rumor. a live-action prequel to Beauty and the Beast, which follows Gaston and Lafou. Right. In the war, presumably, that they were referencing. Yeah, like, that's why, okay, Gaston dies in the end of Beauty and the Beast, right? Yeah. All right. So we know how this is going to end, but... It's like a, but he's not, I never he's, saw it, so thanks. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's if you haven't right. like, killed the story it. of Beauty yeah. and the Beast, you <laughs> haven't figured it out. All right. Um, Guess, okay, guess who's not the Joker? Why do you want to have it like a, uh, like a, I mean, a look, Evans series. is really entertaining to watch. I'm not going to lie. But, I mean, Beauty and the Beast, if you're putting it in the real world, you get kind of a problem anyway, because basically it's set right before the French Revolution, so everyone is toast. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not quite sure which war they're actually talking about for, for guess on the foo. I'm not sure I want to watch it because I don't, I mean, like I said, I like Luke Evans, but... See, this is, this is my issue with the Frozen 2, when I saw the trailer, we talked about it, and, um, and my poor girlfriend, Hannah, every time we pass by something that says Frozen 2, Hannah's a huge Lord of the Rings fan, and I love Lord of the Rings too, but every single time I comment, when did Frozen become Lord of the Rings? <laughs> like, because the way they sell it is like, it's like some enormous epic tale about some girl that makes a dress out of ice. Like this is like that's what I saw out of, out of the things in a talking snowman. I'm sorry, like a talking like you know <laughs> you know snowman, and you know it's just like you they, could win me on the talking snowman because I'm thinking, how do you walk around in a dress made of ice? <laughs> it's bad enough with glass well, slippers. Oh, <laughs> hang on a second. Children, talking snowman are marked. Jim Levitt sa uh, says Gaston Lafleu, a love story. <laughs> 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 okay. Gary, no one Gary, shoots but, like Gaston. no one shoots like Gaston. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, what is it? No one takes like you know cheap shots like Gaston or something like that. I use antlers in all of my decorating. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Like, but like that to me, but I feel like, don't you want to know the dark story of Gaston? No, I don't. No, I don't actually care. I didn't care about Maleficent either. I like her better when she's just scary and trying to like kill Prince Philip mm -hmm. as like a dragon. I, I think that's awesome. Right. <laughs> but me feeling bad for her, well now I can't just want the dragon dead. And it just makes everything complicated <laughs> and messy. And I don't go to the movies for complicated <laughs> yeah. I do not go to the movies for complications. No. She liked G.I. Joe. I did like G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> they had big guns and they blew things up. <laughs> <laughs> Quite simple. <laughs> you did like Tenet trailer, so we're gonna see how that's pretty complicated. Yeah, they didn't blow anything up in Tenet. <laughs> <laughs> they blew things up in Greyhound. There's a theme. <laughs> <laughs> you see, like, I will say this really quick. This, as a guy who's made quite a few action movies up to this point in time and has done coordinated quite a few films, um, there's always, like, this little shock in people's eyes when I mention a film that doesn't have something blowing up, and they're like, oh, my God. Like, you, there's something beyond that with you. It's very strange. A little insulting, I'm not going to lie. I have paid more attention to this. But I will say this. Look to Arnie, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Look to Arnie. She is not better than this. <laughs> I am not. I mean, I, I, I love this show called Wallander, which is messy and like it's Kenneth Branagh. And someone asked me, why do you like it? And I said, because it's more miserable than Morse. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I'm at home alone, I watch miserable, complicated, messy stuff. When I go to the movies, I want stuff to blow up and bad guys to die. <laughs> uh, all right. Mis with miserable, complicated, uh, complicated, uh, messed up, alcoholic he uh, male heroes typically in is what you like. Yeah, yeah. 
So guys, just so you know, for all you men out there who are single, Arnie's email address. If you take and blow things up. <laughs> if you're interested in blowing things up and you may have an alcohol problem and you've got a bit of a CD pass, you probably have a shot. <laughs> email address is going to be down below. <laughs> all right. Oh, man. Anyway. Oh, where is there more news, Mitch? Yeah, yeah so, no. <laughs> segment, I'm no, sorry. not my segment at all. I just bring a bunch of crap to the table that we can guys either make fun of or talk about, <laughs> <laughs> or you know, or yell at me for one now, of the, two, one of the three. Here's a question: Do you think they're going to make a live-action Bambi movie? Live action Bambi. Oh, they, well. they they had a trailer for that on Saturday Night Live. I did with, see that with, with the Rock. Yeah, Rock. yeah. <laughs> well, they will have to do a CG uh, deer, which Terry would be terribly upset about. Hey, I will say this. All right, uh, Jim Levitt says uh, Terry loves Hilda, which is an animated series on Netflix, which is okay. very oh, good. Yeah. Um, Bob's Burgers, which is awesome, really good. It and is. Tim Burton. I'm not it's sure fun. if I love Tim Burton. But I do, I have grown an appreciation for Tim Burton. And but Bob's on my side. He says he likes a good action film, too. <laughs> I, 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 like, I like action film, but Arnie is just like, sometimes, like, you amaze me sometimes. <laughs> just like, you know, you're one of those well-read people I have ever met in my life, and you're like, there's no explosions. <laughs> Why am I watching this? <laughs> and you loved, um, and you really loved uh, Birds of Prey. Yes, I love Birds of Prey, and I actually went to see Emma last night, and there were no explosions in it, and I still liked it. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Um, and uh, we said, I Gary just... Russell's Die Hard Frozen. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> There's probably a fan film on there. Probably, probably is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pretty funny. Um, but actually, uh, another news note, actually, uh, actually, we gotta go to break, and when we come back, we're gonna be doing a new segment that Arnie has brought up which I keep forgetting to make a logo for. We'll be back early at <laughs> Live Show, Wednesday night, 7, 8. Hey, Terry, how's it going? Hey, this laptop's having sound issues again. Yeah, it seems to be a common theme around here. Why would this stupid thing work? Oh, I know I can. Let me take a look. I feel like this happens every week. We really need to get on top of this. I'm sure Dan's doing the best that he can. Yeah, Dan. Oh, there it is. You had it muted. I do not have it muted. And? Officially becoming the best comment section we've ever had on the show. <laughs> Die Hard Frozen. Uh, Bambi's mother dies in Air 15. That would be great. We see, Die, uh, we see Die Hard on ice. We have this is like yes, this is uh, this is this is going to be awesome. Die Hard on ice. You know, John McClane ice skating around with his MP5 shooting up in the air with a cigarette. <laughs> you know, it's going to be awesome. All right. Anyways, early in the live shows Wednesday night seven to eight. Exit channel ninety eight. And Arnie's got a new segment of the show. Let's cut to camera shot of Arnie. All right. And yeah, Arnie, what's the new segment of the show you want to add? It's called How You Doing. And Hi. basically, it's, it's where we talk about kind of the things that we're doing in mm -hmm. our lives. OK, all right. So how you doing? All right, so you got you to pose it to someone, Arnie. OK, so uh, Mitch, how you doing? How am I doing? Yeah, I, uh, I've been just keeping my nose to the grindstone, keep trying to keep bills paid, doing various things. Mm -hmm. uh, VoiceOver's been a little bit more of a uh, a focus for me, so my booth is getting is, is fine tuned, ready to go. So now I'm starting to market myself as a voiceover artist, nice. and uh, I've got a, a job I'm doing right now for a narrative piece for how to put together a deck. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know how to build a deck, I can probably help you out, <laughs> <laughs> and I can do some voiceover for you at the same time. So, All right. uh, so that's been pretty cool. The auditions have been slow this year, though. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking forward to that to pick up sure. The so summer slows down. It was spring, so, spring. But yeah, spring is just, just touch to pick up. So. Yeah. All right. All right. Arnie, you gotta, you, oh, it's your so, segment. Oh, right. Oh, oh wait. Well, I thought we were just going to toss it. So, uh, Pierre, how you doing? I'm doing okay. You doing okay? <laughs> uh, uh, getting ready for the premiere of Don't Say My Name mm -hmm. in May and also your premiere in May. Yes. Uh, the dinner party. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. May 23rd at the Strand Theater in Dover, New Hampshire. Yeah. Tickets are now available. We'll drop the link below. Yeah. Um, Arnie? How am I doing? 
The, I'm here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's How do you do? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, doing okay. <laughs> kind of like Mitch. Doing night. Pre- yeah, doing night. Keep my nose to the grindstone, getting bills paid, getting a lot, a lot of work for this premiere. Mm-hmm. Getting up and running. Yeah, it's going to be great. going to be red carpet, nice food. Sorry. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's going to be really, really good. Um, and I went to see Birds of Prey. Okay. I mean, Hannah went to see it. Hannah loved it. I thought it was, I thought it was good. Action scenes, I got to hand it. The action scenes were really good in this. The well, fight sequences, the... These girls kicked ass in it. It was really good. It's very, really tricky to to sell believable female action characters in it. Um, but these girls clearly really practice this. There was a lot of long one takes and stuff like that. A lot of wide angles. No, no fast cutting or anything like that. It was a lot of just really solid performances, and it was fun. So if you hadn't seen it, um, it don't believe the naysayers. It was pretty good. Go check it out. Yeah. So fight right. scenes past Terry Muster. Fight scenes did pass uh, Terry Muster. Matter of fact, Hannah was saying. She was afraid that I was going to be like complaining about the fight scenes by the end. She's like, "Oh God, Terry." I think they hired this. the choreographer from John Wick to do the fight well, scenes. There you go. Okay, so that really because you right. compared it to. I compared it. I said uh, my only incredible. critique was that yeah. I didn't feel like Harley Quinn should be fighting like John Wick, even though the fight sequences are really good. Mm-hmm. Um, but okay, that would that would make sense. Um, yeah, definitely a fun film. Violent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely not a kids movie. By, by oh, good heavens, no. Yeah, yeah. It's like a violent cartoon. Right. Yeah. So so yeah yeah. Um, but we want to move on because Mitch has got a little bit more to do. But wait, 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 give me just one oh, second. Oh, you got it. How are you doing for you? Yes, How are you do. doing? Because I am doing good, but this actually isn't about me. Um, our guy in the back, Ryan David... John. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Ryan anyway, David Rogers, right. Yes, yes, Ryan David Rogers. I wanted to call him Johnson for some reason. I know. I um, the guy with three first names. The guy with three first names. Who we love. He just dropped his first short film on YouTube. So uh, Mitch and I are in cool. it, so definitely check it out. Cool. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun. It's called The Robotic Horseman. So uh, congratulations, Ryan. Yes. Uh, yeah, dude. Got it done. Nice job. Yep. And it was a lot of fun to do. It's really fun because he sent me the script a long time ago. It's really cool to see... The project it was just an idea. I get tons of scripts mm-hmm. that I read. People send to me. Most of my, I'm all honest, I don't have time to read. Are you sure? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's very rarely do any of these films ever get done. And Ryan did it. And I mean, he shows up every week to work on the show. He works full time. He's got his own business too. I mean, he's a he's a really busy guy. So congratulations, Ryan. You did the thing that most filmmakers don't do. You did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so out. drop a link Absolutely. in there so drop a link, can check yeah. it out. And we'll drop it on our Narrative Film Facebook page and the Early Late Night Live show. It reminds me, I probably should have talked about that too, as to how you're doing or whatever, <laughs> and then I've got other stuff that's going on that right, I yeah. about. But, <laughs> but, but I don't think people know that actors do retire, and not just by dying. <clears throat> and so, <laughs> so Mitch Fortier. So, uh, I'm going to read a little bit of information. Okay. And the first person can can stop at any time, say, I know who that is, and then we'll find out if you really raise, know who that raise is. Raise a hand. Do we raise do ding, ding? I'm going to look away because I can see go the ding, names, ding. so I'm going to look right. at you. <laughs> okay. Make a noise, make a gesture, and we'll see how, how right. where we end up. Okay, so uh, let's see. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding. Get it right. <laughs> X is the X for his name, right? So I got to fill in blanks where names are referenced. So. X, will he, won't he, flirtation with leaving the acting biz is quite a tale. Back in 2009, he said that he wanted to leave the business after rapping on 30 Rock. I don't have any interest in acting anymore, he said. Movies are part of my past. Beep, it's beep. been 30 years. Ding, ding. ding. Yeah. <laughs> beep, beep's fine. Ding, ding. Alec Baldwin? Yep. Yes! Oh! <laughs> yeah. All right, this might be a harder one. Ready? So, oh, actually, maybe not with this first line. Que sera, sera, which translates to what ding, ding. will be, will be. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Doris Day. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, um, okay. All right. uh, so moving on. All right. Yeah, we're slacking right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Royal Tannenbaum star said sayonara to showbiz on July 7, ding, ding. 2004. Bill Murray? Nope. Gene Hackman? All right, so we got two guesses. Yes, that's I threw it in there. <laughs> that's the other one. Um, okay. And yeah, the other guy so, that yeah. works with Wes Anderson. Gene Hackman was a surprise, and uh, we get to the Superman part. I'm sure that would have given it away. I think too. his last movie was the movie he did with Ray Romano, and it was they were both running for mayor of the small town. I went to see it with my sister-in-law. Yeah, so 2004, he went to he played a part in Welcome to Mooseport. Yes, and, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, which I had I haven't seen, but uh, yeah, didn't I knew that. Uh, <laughs> he was a two-time Oscar winner too. Um, all right, so next. Uh, so she, of course, went from actress to icon thanks to her work in films like The Breakfast at Tiffany's, Roman Holiday, oh, okay. uh, ding, ding, My ding. Fair Lady. <laughs> Go ahead, you probably know who it is, right? Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And uh, 
Uh, okay, so let's see. We'll see if we can mix this up a little bit. This one, I don't know. I'm not even sure who this is, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> the three-time Oscar nominee didn't retire, but she did take quite a hiatus from 1995 to 2001. I don't know, it's only six years. Anyways, from the business, it was an organic thing, she told the Boston Globe of her break. I think with anything you're choosing or finding your way with, if it's not pulling you forward a little bit, you're going to feel like you're blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, but she came back after the break, first in the film Big Bad Love. She most recently starred on the Netflix or original series The Ranch. Uh, now I know who it is. Oh, <clears throat> ding, ding. Actually, do you know this No. One? I thought for a second maybe it was Mary Steenburgen, but I don't think that's the wrong actress. I'm thinking. I love The Ranch, and I actually uh, forgot that she was in it. Uh, was it Mary That was the name of it. No, Deborah Winger. Deborah oh, Winger. Oh, I don't oh. know. Okay, all right. Yeah, Deborah. No, don't know who she is. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> Officer in a jump. All right, here's one of my, uh, oh, one of my okay. favorite guys. Uh, so when you, you've been working since childhood, early retirement is sometimes necessary. The Game of Thrones star who played King Joffrey in the hit HBO show started acting oh, uh, when he was I don't seven know, years old. Blonde here. And yeah. after his character was killed off the show, he retired from acting entirely. Oh. I don't know who he is, but he's the really, but his role who, I, I can't yeah, stand I can't Game of Thrones name. at all. Um, but he played the little boy in yeah. Batman Begins. Oh, oh he did. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, all right. In Batman oh. Begins, uh, 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 Little boy who saw Batman in the middle of the night and said, "My friends don't believe that you exist." So Batman gave him one of his tools. Aww. Yes. Nice. Yes. Uh, and then so everyone hated him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, womp womp. <laughs> so that was Jack Gleason, who I probably wouldn't recognize if you put him in the lineup. His name is you Jack. said Jack I mean, I Gleason. Him. Jack Gleason. His name is Jack Gleason. That was wow. uh, unless I. Uh... There is a Jack Gleason. There's a yeah, rather yeah. famous oh, Jack Gleason. Yeah, Jack Gleason. Jackie. Jackie. Yeah. yeah. There's Jack Gleason. Yeah. Um, That's different. Good thing he did that. <laughs> all right, here's one for you. Uh, bad reviews are part of the business, but for the Swedish star, it was enough to push her into early retirement. When her film Two Faced Women tanked, a 35 year old star was embarrassed and decided to wait for World War II to come to an end before pursuing any other films. Oh. Uh, a few opportunities came about, but nothing ever actually uh, actualized, making Two Faced Woman her last film. Waited for she, World War II to end. Uh, no, it didn't. She always preferred to be. You know? No, I was no. just saying. Was I, is that Ingmar Bergman details. or? No. It's not Ingmar. Uh, no, so it's Greta Garbo. There wasn't enough information oh, okay. to, yeah. to add anything to, really to that. So. You're going way back. I thought like some of these like are. consistently retired people, like people yeah, who are so still alive, not like retired yeah, in the grave. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, no, no, no. Too, this, so. Here's a couple of more recent ones. Okay. All right. Uh, so September 2019. Uh, the Empire actor announced that he is done with acting. Jesse Smollett. <laughs> <laughs> I think Empire announced that he was done with acting. Yeah, right, right. I think that's how that went down. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's not a lot of other information uh, in terms of what he did here. The rest of it is just uh, uh, descriptions about There's what There's a lot of do. what Jesse Smollett did, so I should move on. <laughs> uh, on from uh, so this is Terrence Howard. Oh, oh, really? oh Terrence Howard, right, okay. Okay. Yes. Um, too bad, he's a good actor. Yeah, this guy's pretty war well known. It might be a little easier. So after an illustrious 60-year career, he's retiring from acting, as he exclusively revealed to Entertainment Weekly. His final project is The Old Man and the Gun, which came out in September. Uh -huh. ding, ding, oh, yes. Ding, ding. Oh. Redford? Yes. Yeah. yeah uh, Redford. Damn it, we all got that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... When, when Kirk, Jesse Smollett, fake your own hate crime is one of the that in you. We could be watching uh, Ding 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 on the show. Maybe yeah. That episode. So if you, if you guys happen to know who we're talking about. Yes. Yeah, right. um, so this, I didn't know that uh, this person retired. It's uh, interesting. I think that this, the series that I've Red seen retired? them on. That's so sad. I'm sorry. Like, that's yeah, really that, sad. Yeah. yeah. Right. Favorite actors. Yeah. Um, uh, so despite having successful and long running acting stints on Arrested Development, and scandal, she made the decision to leave the industry ahead of her 45th birthday. I was approaching 45, and I just kind of was wondering if there was something else that I could tackle now that I've done, uh, that I've never done before, that would really be challenging and different. Okay, um, making her a memorable name would be a good start. So explained. <laughs> here's, here's the hint, right? So explained to wife Ellen DeGeneres on her talk show. Oh, what's her name? I kind of knew what acting would look like for me for the next 10 to 20 years, so I decided to quit and start a business. Wait a second, did she just say, oh, explaining 
Is Ellen DeGeneres her wife? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, Portia Rossi. Okay. Right. Okay. For yeah. a second, I thought looking at Ellen DeGeneres, I realized what would happen if I said <laughs> <laughs> that's what it sounded like. What you said. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna do with that. If this is what I look like, <laughs> count me out. <laughs> All right. Anyway, speaking of counting out, we gotta wrap up this show. This was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> we got time for one more. We got one more. One more. Is it? We'll do it. <laughs> All right. One more. All right. We're doing it. So, uh, Dan. This guy is one of the new additions to the Hollywood Retirement Club, but he's been here before. The famously selective actor quit acting on stage during a 1989 performance of Hamlet in London. After, and after filming The Boxer in the mid-90s, he retreated from the business. Okay. Instead of... Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Was that a ding, ding? I think it was a ding, ding. Boxer, mid-90s. Oh, no, but he didn't retire. Is it Daniel Day-Lewis? It is. Yeah, Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah. All right, well yeah. done. Yeah. All right. yeah. That was a good Box one. Box is actually one of my favorite favorite movies. Um, not a lot of explosions in that. He's one of the sad <laughs> Gangs in New York. Yeah. Gangs in New York, yes. Yeah. That's a good one, yeah. May, may not have inspired a character. Fair <laughs> <laughs> fight. Yeah, one of his biggest reasons was uh, being a, a serious method actor. He put himself so far into his roles for such a long period of time. Mm -hmm. It was just such a drain, and, and, and uh, he wasn't living his true self and his life. And I mean, last time he became, played Lincoln. Uh, you know, I mean, and he yeah, has an acting so. sense. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the not in theater. All right, that. anyways, <laughs> okay. All right, we got to wrap up this, this show. Thank you, Pierre Rum, for coming on onto the, sh uh, the show. Looking forward to seeing you uh, later on uh, later on in the year. Uh, thank you to the whole crew. Everyone, please make sure, I'm going to make this the ending note, please make sure to wash your hands early and wash them often. All right. Who's our guest next week, Terry? Our guest is actually up there and written is... Uh, Ellie Escobar is a go-getter who will talk about her new projects, uh, what life is like as an actress. So you don't want to don't want to miss. I'm actually looking very, very much looking forward to meeting her because I've seen a lot about very fun, her. A lot of energy. Yes, yeah. a lot of energy, but I've never actually met her, so I'm very much looking forward to this. All right, we'll be back next week, seven to eight, exit of channel ninety-eight. Hey, thanks for watching the early late night live show. We are on every Wednesday night live at Exeter Studios in Exeter, New Hampshire, 7 p.m. every Wednesday night. Please make sure to join us next week for more entertainment, uh, comedy, and information that is probably not that important or timely. But no sports and no politics, so there's that. To find out more about my film company, uh, make sure to check out narrowstreetfilms.com. To find out more about Killarney's writing, make sure you check out killarneytrainer.com. To find out more about Mitch and his acting, I'm sure he's got a website. I keep forgetting the name of it. I'll write it down here. To find out more about the wonderful studio that we produce at Exeter uh, Studio, go to exeternh.tv. They're a great studio and they're doing a lot of cool things. Uh, but please make sure to like us on Facebook and please, please, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell and the uh, like and make sure that you share with your friends and enemies alike because we don't judge that much. See you next week.